Hi guys, I'm Chris. And I'm Katie. And at the start of lockdown last year, we decided to build our hype dome. Now it's been a year since we built the dome and we've been through a tough Scottish winter and an even tougher Scottish summer. So come and join us as we find out how it's coped and crucially, whether we'd buy it again, knowing what we know now. Can't always be sunsets and cold beers. No, we do get our fair share of rough weather here in the Scottish borders. And one of the most common questions I get about Hype Dome is, how does it cope with wind and rain? Well, this footage was taken on a blustery day last year when the wind speed, as measured by my trusty weather station, was gusting above about 40 miles an hour, which is pretty normal for us, especially in winter. But I have to say, the dome has performed impeccably with no flexing or sign of it moving around at all. Of course, we have it firmly anchored down using heavy planters. Each one of these weighs about 60 to 70 kilograms, but it doesn't creak, it doesn't get drafty, and even with the wind and horizontal rain, another Scottish speciality, it doesn't leak. Well, apart from underneath the edges maybe, but we'll come to that later. In fact, domes and round structures in general are known to perform well when the weather turns nasty. If you look at some of the buildings built on top of mountains, for example, you'll notice a lot of them are round, and that's because they have no flat sides for the wind to push against. Now, our dome is somewhat protected by being placed on a slightly sunken patio and protected by hedges, but I really wouldn't be too worried to move it to a more exposed location in the garden provided it was anchored down properly with the hardware that Hype Dome provide. Overall, I'd give the Hype Dome 10 out of 10 for wind resistance and 9 out of 10 for rain resistance, purely because our dome is sat on paving slabs and the water sometimes comes underneath. That's not a fault of Hype Dome, just the way ours is positioned. If yours is sat on a deck or on grass, you won't have that issue. And if you stick around, you'll find out what we've done to eliminate this issue completely. Next up, cleaning. This is the next most common question I've been asked in the comments from our build video. Is it easy to keep clean? Now, I'm not sure if this is a fully sanctioned method of cleaning the Hype Dome, but it seems to have worked for us. The more challenging parts to clean are where the panels overlap and join together because you can get a buildup of dirt and green stuff. It's not such a big deal, but we had to have a go at removing it carefully with a pressure washer and it kind of works, although it does make a bit of a mess inside. So in conclusion, the answer is, it depends how much effort you want to put in. I wouldn't say it's zero maintenance, but a wipe down with a damp cloth is gonna stop the dirt building up. Just be careful not to scratch the panels with rough cloths or any trap dirt or grit. I guess, wash it like you would a car. And so, as the weather warms up here in the UK and socialising rules are relaxing, we're still finding the dome a great place to allow us to spend some time outside. Uh, but there are a few things that we've done in the last 12 months to make it a more comfortable place to be. The biggest thing we've found is we've evolved the way we use the space. At first we thought it would be a nice place to dine in the long summer evenings, but honestly we weren't using it enough when it was set up as a table and chairs. So we changed it to a more informal setting. We also added these floating deck tiles that I bought online. They're 30 centimeters square, held together with this plastic mesh backing, uh, and they fit together really easily. It took about 90 tiles to completely fill the interior space, and we've used gravel in the remaining gaps. I think it looks really smart, and importantly, means we don't get wet feet if any rain comes in underneath the edges. Maybe if we were building again, I might consider using these deck tiles as a base on which to build the dome. We've added small touches like some solar lights and bunting, which we've hung off these lightweight eye nuts. They simply screw into the existing bolts and are good for lightweight items. So what do you think about the additions we've made? Let us know in the comments below, and if you've got ideas yourself, we'd love to hear them. Next time, as summer approaches, we'll be looking at ways in which to keep Hype Dome usable even in the blazing sun. 
So we'll be installing some opening windows and the shade sail to make sure we keep all the family members cool. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And if you're thinking of building your own, please feel free to use my affiliate link below before you order as it enables us to keep making these videos. Until next time, stay safe, stay at home.